you at once. The Kwamis remain some of the most unique creatures in Miraculous Ladybug. However, as concepts for the world, some Kwamis directly opposed another. The most distinct example of this occurs between Tiki and Plague. Their abilities of creation and destruction contradict each other, creating a delicate balance. Tiki and Plague represent a yin-yang pair that can't be interfered with. The same can be said about the other Kwamis in the Chinese Miracle Box. As in Furious Fu, Suhan confirms that each have a corresponding yin-yang pair. So far, the series hasn't alluded to their specific combinations, but in today's video, we're guessing which Kwamis complete one another to create the perfect pair. The saying is if one of us stays here to keep watch, the rest of us can come, right? Huh, what? Number 1. Ways and Pollen As the Kwamis of protection and submission, Ways and Pollen appear as clear counterparts. Ways's main objective is to protect others. He can create shields to shelter people and objects. His abilities represent caring for others and keeping them safe, which is what made him the perfect Kwami for Master Fu, as the Guardian needed to protect the Miracle Box and Kwamis within it at a moment's notice, as he does as Jade Turtle in Miracle Queen. In contrast, Pollen can subdue anyone, be they friend or foe. She can stop someone in their tracks and take control of any situation. These can be used for good or immoral purposes, as seen when Chloe uses the Bee Miraculous in Miracle Queen, to overpower the other heroes or when she uses it in Mayura, to help stop the villain made by Hawkmoth. When viewed together, Ways and Pollen represent who has the power in a relationship, as one power helps others while the other can control them. Their memory gets erased when they pass on the box to protect the secret identities of the Miraculous holders. Number 2. Dusu and Tricks Dusu spends most of the series in service to Gabriel and Natalie. It's hard to imagine one of the other Kwamis countering her ability to create life. However, Dusu and the Peacock Miraculous represent emotion, something versatile and impossible to discredit. Felix uses the Peacock Miraculous despite his reservations about creating sentient creatures in emotion. When he has to destroy the Senta monster Red Moon, he expresses intense remorse, exhibiting the emotional concept behind his Miraculous. Trix, on the other hand, has abilities that directly oppose the truth. His ability to create illusions can manipulate and exploit someone's emotions and perceptions. Alia uses the Fox Miraculous to convince Nino to reject an Akuma in Rocketeer, using illusions to change his perception of an upsetting situation. Alia must be objective in using these powers because one slip-up could cause an illusion to lose its intended effect. Without this ability to keep her emotions in check, she likely couldn't trick her boyfriend Nino, or create convincing illusions strong enough to convince Hawkmoth of their genuineness. No! Don't do that! You should be resting! Gabriel so desperately wants the Miraculous, and I want to be the one to give it to him. Number 3. Mulo and Stomp Mulo and Stomp, alongside their concepts of determination and multiplication, directly oppose one another when problem-solving. Mulo's ability to multiply herself and her wielder allows her to split their focus, allowing them to solve many things at once. In Kwame Buster, Marinette uses the Mouse Miraculous to create a personalized team of superheroes, with some of her clones having individual roles within the overall plan. Stomp's invulnerability allows him and his wielders a direct approach to any problem. Instead of dividing their attention, they can focus on a single solution. When they face an enemy, Stomp or his wielder can plow through their opponent, as they don't need to worry about getting hurt. In Penal Team, Ivan uses the Ox Miraculous to play against Penalty in a soccer match, where he can run full speed ahead to try and make goals without considering his surroundings. Hi, I'm Stump. Let's add some muscle to this game. What if I hurt someone using my superpowers? Number 4. Roar and Sass Roar and Sass have very contradictory personalities, reflected in their representation of exaltation and intuition. Roar's ability to stockpile energy for a massive punch represents how he elevates someone's status and power. It also illustrates how he expects his wielders to have a positive and energetic personality. Much like the emotional definition of exaltation, his wielder Julika gains this extensive power and comes out of her shell in Crocodile, when she gains the confidence to speak up and help the heroes as Purple Tigress. Sass and his powers based on intuition are representative of a subconscious understanding. Unlike Roar, he and his wielders don't need to build up their resolve, as they can use concise reasoning to determine how they should proceed or reverse time. When Luca first receives the Snake Miraculous in Desperata, he has an easier time defeating the villain than Adrian, as he's objective in problem solving. It's also interesting to consider that the Miraculous wielders, who are siblings, received opposing Miraculouses. My name is Sass, and I'll be your Kwame. But what am I supposed to do? All you have to say is, Sass, steel, slither. Number 5. Fluff and Long The concepts that Fluff and Long represent are as abstract as they come. They also represent different ways to perceive a situation, person, or thing. Fluff represents evolution, otherwise known as change over time. It's the steady build to something different, or how things inevitably grow over time. 
Alex uses the Rabbit Miraculous in episodes like Cat Blanc to ensure that the timeline progresses as it should, moving the story of Miraculous Ladybug forward. Long, on the other hand, represents perfection. Perfection is flawless, meaning that no change is required to reach something's optimal state. It's a solitary concept where no movement or growth is necessary. Kagame uses the Dragon Miraculous starting in Ikari Gozen. Interestingly enough, her mother pressures her to be perfect in everything she does. <laughs> Greetings, young lady, and good day to you. Fear not, I am Long, the Dragon Kwame. Number 6. Kalki and Ziggy Kalki's ability to create portals receives a significant amount of screen time. She represents migration or the constant movement from one place to another. In the series, she moves people and objects, and her concept represents something physical and literal. Kalki uses her powers in Optigami to move Marinette and Alia throughout a building, helping them avoid Style Queen. Unlike the literal concept of migration, Ziggy represents passion. Passion is not specific, and its interpretation depends on a person and their situation. That's how Ziggy and her wielders can use her powers anywhere, as it's incredibly versatile if enough thought goes into using it. In Penal Team, Nathaniel uses the Goat Miraculous to create a magic wand to trick Chloe. Hi, I'm your Kwame, Ziggy! Number 7. Shupu and Daisy Shupu and Daisy represent emotional reactions. Shupu, as the Kwame of derision, makes a mockery out of the people and things around him. Through ridicule, he makes a grave situation something to laugh about. For example, Kim uses the Monkey Miraculous in episodes like Party Crasher to interfere with the villain's power, making them less of a threat. In contrast, Daisy represents jubilation, which means she strives to uplift others, making them feel triumphant and happy. She wouldn't ridicule anyone for their feelings, and her power gift encourages others to embrace their deepest desires. Rose uses the Pig Miraculous and its power to help Julika in Guilt Trip to free her from her intense guilt. What's your name? My name's Daisy, and I'm your Kwame. They'll give you your powers. You just have to recite these words. Daisy, rejoice! Number 8. Oriko and Bark The final yin-yang pair could be Oriko and Bark, the Kwamis of pretension and adoration. On the surface level, their concepts are already complete opposites. Pretension means to claim something as one's own, just as Oriko can give himself or his wielder any power. Mark uses the Rooster Miraculous and Penal Team to continuously score goals, making him an undefeatable soccer player. Instead of giving herself power, Bark's concept of adoration seems to serve others more than herself. Adoration can cause someone to respect someone else so intensely that they devote themselves to them, best seen in the series through Sabrina, the wielder of the Dog Miraculous. Although Sabrina faces constant mistreatment by Chloe, she continues to devote her time and attention to her throughout the series. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bark and I'm your Kwame! These yin-yang pairs are up to interpretation, but many Kwamis directly oppose one another. If not in theory, then in practice. Their distinct personalities and powers make them objective opposites that balance one another out. The episode Recreation explains the importance of maintaining the balance between each Kwame and their powers. Gimme, the Kwame of reality, explains that for their powers to change something in the universe, a secondary thing would need to change to keep the world balanced. In Gabriel's case, he appears to trade his life to save Natalie. Gimme forms through the unification of Tiki and Plague, a yin-yang pair. Therefore, it's possible that every Kwame pair in this list could join together to create a new, cosmic, world-altering Kwame. The only exception to the rule appears to be Nuru, whose ability to transmit powers doesn't have a direct counter within the Chinese Miracle Box. Perhaps a new Kwame will be introduced in the future who can take a Miraculous Wielder's abilities away, but only time can tell. All we know is these Kwame pairs have a chance to share the screen in Season 6, and much like Tiki and Plague's scenes together, they're sure to make for some interesting interactions. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads.